Chris here, and welcome to my channel. In today's Five on Friday, I'm going to share with you five books that are coming out in January that I would like to read. So there are some very interesting books that are coming out in January, and I thought it would be fun to give you guys an idea of what books I have seen that are being released in January that are kind of on my radar that I will hopefully get to at some point in 2025. First up, releasing on January 7th, I'm going to go with Adrifts in Currents Clean and Clear by Shauna McGuire. This is the 10th book in the Wayward Children series. I absolutely adore this series, so it is no shock that this is one I'm going to highlight. I love reading these books every single year. I look forward to them every single year, and they're such a good way to kind of start off the year knowing I'm going to get a new book in a series I love and immediately read it and put it right back on my up-to-date list. So I thought this was a no-brainer when it came to choosing books that I am eagerly anticipating for the month of January. The second book I'm looking forward to also releases on January 7th, and it is The Stolen Queen by Fiona Davis. This is a historical fiction that will transport you from New York City's most glamorous party to the labyrinth streets of Cairo and back, Egypt, 1936, when anthropology student Charlotte Cross is offered a coveted spot on an archaeological dig in Egypt's Valley of the Kings, she leaps at the opportunity. But after an unbearable tragedy strikes, Charlotte knows her future will never be the same. New York City, 1978. 18-year-old Annie Jenkins is thrilled when she lands an opportunity to work for iconic former Vogue fashion editor Diana Vreeland, who's in the midst of organizing the famous Met Gala, hosted at the museum and known across the city as the party of the year. Though Annie soon realizes she'll have her work cut out for her, scrambling to meet Diana's capricious demands and exacting standards. Meanwhile, Charlotte, now leading a quiet life as the associate curator of the Met's celebrated Department of Egyptian Art, wants little to do with the upcoming gala. She's consumed with her research on Hathokari, a rare female pharaoh dismissed by most other Egyptologists as unimportant. That is, until the night of the gala, when one of the Egyptian art collection's most valuable artifacts goes missing, and there are signs that Hathokara's legendary curse might be reawakening. As Annie and Charlotte team up to search for the missing antiquity, a desperate hunch leads the unlikely duo to the one place Charlotte swore she'd never return, Egypt. But if they have any hope of finding the artifact, Charlotte will need to confront the demons of her past, which may mean leading them both directly into danger. This sounded absolutely fascinating. I love Egypt, so I love the Egyptian influence that's going to be happening in this book. It sounds right up my alley, and I look forward to trying to get to this in 2025. The third book I'm going to mention is The In-Between Bookstore by Edward Underhill, and this releases on January 14th. This is a poignant and enchanting novel about a magical bookstore that transports a trans man through time and brings him face to face with his teenage self, offering him the chance of a lifetime to examine his life and identity to find a new beginning. It says it's the stunning novel of love, self-discovery, and the choices that come with both, for anyone who has ever wondered what their life might be like if they had the chance to go back and take a bigger, braver risk. I think this sounds fascinating. I love a bit of time travel, so I'm hoping that I really enjoy this one. And I also love that it is got trans rep in it. So looking forward to checking this one out. Book number four is The Baby Dragon Cafe by A.T. Qureshi, and this releases on January 16th. This is a cozy romance Perfect for fans of Pumpkin Spice Cafe and Legends and Lattes. And I love Legends and Lattes, so I'm hoping I love this one too. It says, when Safria opened up her cafe for baby dragons and their humans, she wasn't expecting it to be so difficult to keep the fires burning. It turns out young dragons are not the best magical animals to keep in a cafe. And replacing all that burnt furniture is costing Safria more than she can afford from selling dragon roasted coffee. Aiden is a local gardener and local heartthrob, more interested in his plants than actually spending time with his disobedient baby dragon. When Aiden walks in to Safira's cafe, he has a genius idea. He'll ask Safira to train his baby dragon and he'll pay her enough to keep the cafe afloat. Safira's happy-go-lucky attitude doesn't seem to do anything but irritate the grumpy but gorgeous Aiden, except that everywhere she goes, she finds him there. But can this dragon cafe owner turn her fortunes around and maybe find love along the way? This just sounds like it's going to be really, really cute. I love the idea of having baby dragons and seeing how Safira deals with that. The cover also gives me those cute, cozy vibes. And like I said, if it leans more Legends and Lattes than Pumpkin Spice Cafe, then I'm probably going to really enjoy it. 
And then the last book I'm going to mention comes out on January 28th, and it's Carving Shadows into Gold by Bridget Kemmerer. This is the second book in the Forging Silver into Stars series, which is a spinoff series of the Curse Breaker series. I loved book one, and I cannot wait to dive back into this story. Most of Bridget Kemmerer's books I've absolutely adored, so I don't see why this book would be any different. I can't really give you details because we're talking about book two in a series that is also a spin-off series. So even talking about book one would be spoilers for the Cursebreaker series. However, I like this far more than the Cursebreaker series. I'm very, very invested in the story. And like I said, I'm, I'm quite looking forward to diving back in and getting to reconnect with these characters. So this was another one that was like, I have to put this on my list. So there are five books that are being released in January that I'm very excited for and hope to get to in 2025. What is a January release you're looking forward to reading? Let me know in the comment section below. All of my social media is linked in the description below if you'd like to come chat with me. If you've made it this far in the video, leave me dragon emojis. Like this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!